Since be forgot and never brought to mind Should old acquaintance be forgot And the days of old Lang Syne Robert Burns is surely rolling in his grave No doubt, Livingston But only because he penned this famous song For those with a joie de vivre Not for New Year's curmudgeons adorned in grumpy pantaloons like you. I actually enjoy the New Year's, except for the fact that this connotes another year of this. Quite. Happy New Year's and welcome to Creature Features. This precious little bringer of trouble is Tangella, the bloke with the poor temperament and sour disposition is Livingston, and I am your jovial MC of fright, Vincent Bandall. Tonight we have a lovely program in store for you, our phenomenal viewers. First off, we'll be watching the fabulous classic film, Things to Come, the 1936 adaptation of the H.G. Wells story of the same title. I love this film, Tangella loves this film, Livingston will tolerate it to a degree, and we hope you lovely citizens at home will like it a wee bit as well. And joining us for tonight's New Year's celebratory antics will be old friend John Provost. You'll remember John from when he portrayed Timmy on The Lassie Show, or maybe you know him from when he played alongside Kurt Russell in The Computer Wore Tennis Shoes. What are tennis shoes, Livingston? Trainers. Huh. John will tell us what he's been up to lately, chat us up about this film, and inform and delight us with his upcoming plans and appearances for the forthcoming year. So stay with us for yet another night of frolicking fright here on Creature Features. Stay tuned. <laughs> Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Hi, I'm Linda Blair. And if you want to be scared, stay tuned on North Bay Television. Coming up. to Creature Features. It's New Year's. And we're with John Provost. I mean, of all people to be with on New Year's, I think I'd rather be with this gent 
than well, any well, other. Well, thank you. Well, no, it's because I've heard you're quite the party animal. It's out. Now well, what? He likes animals, so we know this. So, John Provost, in case you don't know, was Timmy on Lassie. Yes, and for you'll, seven you'll, years. You'll probably tired of talking about this, aren't you? Not really, because nobody's ever come up to me and said they hated Lassie. No, everybody loves so, Lassie. It's, it's good. And it was the best Lassie. There were so many different variations of the oh. Lassie show. There I were, yes. Yours was the best. Yeah, June Lockhart. Yes, great mom. And June's still with us. June and happy. is still with us. She could still technically be your mom, right? Well, she still is. Right. Yes. And in, in syndication as well. That's wonderful. But he's done many, many other things as well. And we're going to talk about those things and what you're doing next and all that stuff. But first, we're going to start this film, Things to Come. Excellent. So Excellent. You've movie. seen it. I've seen it. Yes. Maybe you've seen it as well. But, you know, we're going to watch it again because it's sort of a good New Year's type film, right? Is yes. It, it's, it has to do with the future. Right. And we're starting a new year. Speaking of the future, they did not do a very good job predicting the future in this film. I mean, you know, yeah. we have rockets, but it's not like you and I have personal rockets to fly around town in, do That's we? coming. Soon. It's, it, it is one of the things soon. to come. It is. Yeah. I think in this film they're talking about like it's the 80s. I think they mm -hmm. say it's like 1984, but not the 1984 Orwell. No, that's, 84. that's, no, that's right. different. Right. All right. Well, we're going to start that. But was the dog last time you had a collie? <clears throat> well, saving people. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's a rescue dog. Uh, you know, she's in the spirit tonight. She is making sure that I everyone figured. is having fun. She she decorated I'm our poor Livingston. You know, he's a yes. happy chap. <laughs> and she's still got those things. Hopefully she runs out of those soon. All right, well, we're going to chat some more with John Provost. But first, we've got to start the movie Things to Come. So you guys stay with us. <laughs> Early. Yes, I'd finished up. It was too late startling fresh. What's all this fuss about in the papers tonight, Mr. Cabell? Wars and rumors of wars. Crying wolf? Someday a wolf will come. These fools are capable of anything. In that case, what happens to medical research? It has to stop. That'll mess me up. Mess you up. Mess everything up. My God, if war gets loose again. Happy Christmas, everyone. While shepherds watch their flocks by night, all seated on the ground. What's the matter with you fellows? Oh, that. Huh. This little upset across the water doesn't mean anything. Threatened men live long and threatened wars never occur. <laughs> Another speech by him. But I tell you, there's nothing in it. It's just to buck people up about the air estimates. Now, why meet wars halfway? Why not look on the bright side of things? You're all right. Your business is going up. You've got a jolly wife, a pretty home. All's right with the world, eh? Mm. All's right with the world. Certainly. Passworthy, you should have been called Pippa Passworthy. Oh, and Cabal, you've been smoking too much. You're not, uh, you're not eupeptic. <laughs> oh, come on, it's Christmas. Noel, 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 born is the king of Israel. and earth, goodwill towards men. <laughs> Real old-fashioned Christmas this year. Fresh little snow with a nip in the air, eh? <laughs> what is that? Sounded like a gun. Oh, no guns here. Merry Christmas, Cabell. Here's to another good year for all of us. Another year of recovery, eh? <laughs> what are searchlights doing now? Yes. Well, it must be anti-aircraft maneuvers. Maneuvers at Christmas? No. Listen, guns again.
Here, the bell speaking. The hill down here drums three. Mobilization. Oh, God. Perhaps it's only precautionary mobilization. The unknown aircraft passed over Sea Beach and dropped bombs within a few hundred yards of the waterworks. They then turned seaward again. By this time, they'd been picked up with the searchlights of the battleship Dinosaur. Before they could mount out of range, she had opened upon them with her anti-aircraft guns. Unfortunately, without result. Of course, everyone has said this time they'll start without any declaration of war. Oh, listen. We do not yet know the nationality of these aircraft, though, of course, there can be little doubt of that place of origin. But before all things, it is necessary for the country to keep calm. No doubt the losses suffered by the fleet are serious. That losses of the fleet? Listen, listen. And it is imperative that the whole nation should at once stand to arms. Orders for a general mobilization have been issued, and the precautionary civilian organization against gas will at once be put into operation. Our instructions have just come to hand. We shall cut off for five minutes, and then read you the general instructions. Please call in all your friends. Call in everyone you can. You've got your stimulant, Passworthy. Something great has got you. War has come. Daddy? Well, you've got to do your bit, you know, Sally. You've got to do your bit. I'm an officer too, Daddy. <laughs> That's the spirit. Carry on, sir. Carry on. <laughs> Goodbye, son. There. Have it. Quick, march!
Guests of the show stay at the Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa in Santa Rosa. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Bosswick, you're watching North Bay TV. Buy my underwear. Awesome. Huh? Hello, I'm Vincent, this is Tangella, and we just want to remind you we've got a wonderful website. It's at creaturefeatures.tv, and at that location we've got things like previous episodes, our merchandise, we've got photographs of the entire gang, including Tangella and her hideous friend. So be sure to come see our site. You'll love it. Back on Creature Features with Mr. John Provost, previously Timmy from Lassie, but you've done a number of other things which I want to talk about. But first up, this film, 1936, Things to Come. And, you know, they're talking about, like, predicting World War II, but, you know, it was already kind of starting by 1936. Well, but this, right? you know, this was Hollywood. It was a movie, right. so they do things, you know, they follow. Yeah. They follow the news. There you go. And they, they base their stories on that. Well, the movie gets better because we're still like in the old it's times and soon we're going to be in the future. I like the future. Good. Because it's, it's not in the past and it's not in the present. It's futuristic. All right. So how did you get started doing all this stuff? I mean, before you did Timmy wow. and Lassie. Oh, were, I was were like. Famous people. Well, yeah. I started Lassie when I was seven. Right. But I'd already been in. 10 movies and even live television and I, I started my first movie I was not quite three years old oh my goodness. so it, was, it wasn't something that I woke up one day and said hey I want to be in movies right my mom read an ad in the paper that um, Warner Brothers was going to be doing this movie and um, she wanted to go and get the star's autograph that's all, just not No, just she didn't care. No audition. Just just, audition. Yeah, and so she took me on this, this audition. Had never been to a studio in her life. And um, there were over 200 little boys and some little girls whose moms had cut their hair that looked like little boys. And I ended up getting the job. And which was, that was it. Which, which it film? was called So Big with Jane Wyman and Sterling oh, Hayden. Wow. And Jane Wyman was the lady who my mom thought she was going to get her autograph. Which I imagine she eventually did. She got more than the autograph. Right. And then that led to the next movie, which was The Country Girl with Bing Crosby and Grace Kelly. Now, Jane Wyman was married to Ronald Reagan. Yes. Well, not then. Not then. Later on. Right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's Yeah. And so then that, more movies and... Then I got a contract with RKO for five movies, and then the last movie did I did. Did you ever meet Howard Hughes? No, but I flew on one of his planes. Oh, I, I he owned um, Transworld Airlines, right. TWA at he that started time. It. Right. And we did the last movie before I started Lassie, which was Escapade in Japan. Right. Came back, 
got the part of Timmy for Lassie, did that for seven years. And so it was like nonstop it, for you since three it years It was. Old. It, and back then, we worked nine months out of the year to film Lassie because we did 37, 39 episodes a year where today, oh you know, I mean, now you do a lot. But most shows... No, it's once a week. It's not... I know. Long. Well, that's, a, that's like... There's how many... There's 52. That's fif right. 52. You're right. Yeah. Because things like Walking Dead, it's oh, like they, oh, nine like episodes in the season. Nine or 12, over. and that's, that's maximum. So... I guess yeah. they do it a bit different now, though, because they're like movies. It's like... It is huge, different. It like is. And Breaking Bad. Well, it's and, like, you know, they have how many channels now? Like 400 or something? Where back then, we had like three... Or four. I, you know, if we were on back in those days, I think we'd have more than the four or five people who watch our show watching us. I think we'd probably I've, have 50 or 60. Vincent, I have heard that there are quite a few people that watch this show. Oh, well, you know, only the angry ones tend to write to us. So. Well, yeah. isn't that, that's, that's unfortunate because, come on, good people, write. Oh, they write love to the show. I'm, I'm fibby. That's the, you they, only like reading is, the bad ones. All we get is too many good letters. We never get. Any I know. Bad that's letters. why you read the bad ones. But all they're right. not all bad. No, they're not. They're no. not. All right, I'm getting the single. We gotta get back to the film. Okay. So let's get right back to things to come. You guys stay with us.
the pestilence has ceased. Thanks to the determined action of our chief in shooting all wanderers, there have been no cases for two months. The pestilence has been conquered. The chief is preparing to resume hostilities against the hill people with the utmost vigor. Soon we shall have victory and peace. All is well. God save the chief. God save our land. Any more insulated wire? We've got no rubber wire at all, sir. Any rubber tape? There's not a scrap left in the place. We used the last on the other motor. Oh, what's the use? There's no petrol anyway. Don't believe there's three gallons of petrol left in this accursed ruin of a town. What's the good of sitting here a job like this? Nothing will ever fly again. Flying's over. Everything's over. Civilization's dead. <laughs> It's a good pre-pestilence machine. I oil it and turn it over at time. You think it'll go fast someday, still? Oh, I'm not one of your petrol hoarders. But all the same, that engine turns over still. Why, I remember when I was a lad, when it was new, we thought nothing of going a hundred miles in it. A whole hundred miles. Less than three hours I've done it in. Oh, that sort of thing's all gone now. Gone forever, huh? Right, sir. Yep! Yep! Richard. What is it? You won't think me mad. Why, darling? I thought I heard an aeroplane this morning. At dawn. I thought it was a dream, but... Nonsense. I tell you, flying's finished. We shall never get in the air again. Never. I'll get petrol for you, trust me. You look after the machines. I know you haven't got the stuff, but you can get round there, for example. Transfer parts. Use bits of one to mend another. Be resourceful. Give me only ten machines in working order. Give me only five. I don't want them all. And we'll end this war of ours forever. I'll see you get your reward. Is your wife, Gordon? You keep her well hidden. Salutation, lady. Let's use your influence with our master mechanic. The combatant state wants his service. I'm sure my husband does his best for you. Uh, that's hardly enough, lady. The combatant state demands miracles. Not everyone can work miracles as you do, Chief. Oh, I'm sure you could work miracles if you tried, lady. Rudolph! Lady, lady, I showed it to you, but you said you didn't want it. Watsky's been up to his tricks again, and he'll have to answer for them. But he's been keeping things back from me again. Only Watsky keeps things back. What do you think of our master mechanic here? The one that may have those planes of mine to end this war of ours with the hillman. Well, can't you make him? I thought you could make everybody do everything. Some things you can't do, madam. You can't fly without petrol. You can't mend machines without tools or material. You've gone back too far. Flying's become a lost skill in every town. But are you really as stupid as that? I'm as helpless as that. And now, Chief, what are you going to do about it? He's going to let me have those machines, and I'm going to let him have coal. Stuff to make oil. It's a lost skill. It's a dream of the... Do you and you find out who this is and what it means? There's only one man in it. Hold him. Somewhere they can still make new machines. I didn't dream it was still possible. Yes, but who is this man? How did he dare come here? Pitch him to the town hall. Guard his machine and bring him to me there. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com 
the official merchandiser of Creature Feature Accessories. Welcome to the Flamingo Hotel in Northern California's beautiful Sonoma County wine country. The hotel was built in 1957 to mirror the image of the original Vegas Flamingo design. It's always been the area's favorite resort because of its amenities and its strong connection to the glamour of Hollywood and Las Vegas. The Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa offers 170 guest rooms. It includes 14 suites and executive king accommodations. From all of us at the Flamingo Hotel, we thank you. I look forward to seeing you soon. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. You can't control where it will land, only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how to protect your community from wildfires. watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Creature Features. Joan stepped away for a moment so we could do all letters from you. What do we got, Mr. Livingston? A few long ones this time. A few long ones. I like long ones. Long letters. Yeah. And how are you, Tangella? She's in the spirit for New Year's Eve. Yeah, she made quite a mess of uh, Livingston at the commencement. But uh, he's, he's a good sport. All right, you guys ready? Here we go. Uh, this is from Troy in Napa Valley. We've been there, Napa Valley. Wine yes, we have. Tasting beautiful Wines. scenery, right? All right, he says, Hi, Vincent Tangella and Mr. Livingston. I love the show. It brings back old memories of slumber parties with my mates as a youth. My first slumber party I had was on a Saturday night. Bob Wilkins showed a movie and it had boobs. Can we say that on television? Boobs? I believe we can. All right. So uh, he's not sure of the name, but for a bunch of nine-year-olds, it didn't matter. That was the cherry on top in those days. Been a fan ever since. My mom was a nurse who worked long hours, so my friends and I had a lot of fun every Saturday night. Sorry, Mom. Love you guys. Don't ever stop, Troy. Uh, Tom, what's this film that he showed with the boobs? Twins of Evil. Twins of Evil. All right. So, Troy, advice from an expert. It's called Twins of Evil if you want to see the boobs again. We, we wouldn't show that Twins. because we're a family show, right? Indeed. Bob was a bit risque. Well, we're after 10 o'clock. So. All right. All right, this next one is from Darren Thomas in Huntington, West Virginia. Beautiful place, actually. He, he, he must be watching us on YouTube, right? We don't have a channel in Huntington. I mean, we do. It'd be nice if we do. All right, uh, Darren says, hey, guys and girl. I'm liking the show. You're all putting it on, but I'm curious if you'll ever show off more of your house. I think it'd be interesting to see Livingston's quarters and perhaps that bathroom that sounds like it's regularly full of eels. This one. Uh, all the best, Darren, in Huntington. All right, uh, y yes, we do plan to show more of the house. You know, we've got these big cameras and they're on these wheels and we're trying to figure out how to get them up this big staircase of ours. But we will do that. This is something we plan to do next year. Thanks for writing, Darren. You know, all the letters tonight are very nice. 
it's it's nice to have it's a wonder is it not mail for a change all right this one is from steve in shelby ohio oh that's far away the buckeye state i believe shelby ohio all right he says dear creature features your show is pretty good livingston and tangela are okay but I, for the life of me, can't figure out why they put a Guinness swilling limey at the helm of an American show that mostly shows American movies and has guests that are primarily American as well. Blimey, good show, old chap. I don't think this one's going to end very well. If it wasn't for America, you'd be speaking German right along with Paul Livingston as you cried in your sauerkraut sandwich. Have a good day, you pawn-crossing, BBC-watching, metric-using wanker. Well, that's not very nice now, is it? Yours truly, Steve from Shelby, Ohio. P.S. It's called soccer, not football. Well, that's not very nice. Well, you still owe us, Steve, for pinching our language at least, right? Indeed. All right, that's it for letters. If you'd like to send us a letter... Just uh, send it to the email address here, or you could put it in the post using a stamp and an envelope and send it to this address, and it'll get to Livingston, and he'll look at it, and maybe he'll screen the letters this time. Stay with us. We'll be right back with John Provost, but off we go to things to come. Come along, Mary, I must see that machine. Who's in control of this part of the country? The chief. What we call the boss. Good. I want to see him. He sent me to arrest you. You can't do that. But I'll come and see him. Well, you're under arrest whether you'll admit it or not. The country's in a state of war. Well, come along. I know the way. I remember this place well. I used to live over there for years. Ever heard of a man named Partworthy? Harding? Look, here he comes now. So you're Harding. I seem to remember something about you. You were a young man. You're John Cabell. I remember you. I used to visit your house here, endless years ago before the wars. You're still flying. Your hair is grey, but you look young enough. Ah, here. Oh. Who's in control in this place? Oh, we have a chief, a warlord. Mm, the usual thing. I want to look up your warlord. Where can we go and talk? In my laboratory is the best thing. It's just over here. Right. Oh, come on. Oh, You can't go in there. You're under arrest. You've got to go with me to the chief. All in good time. I must see this gentleman first. Well, you've got to go with me. Orders are orders. The boss first. Where is this man? Why isn't he brought here? Well, he's gone up with Dr. Hardy. He has to be brought here. I must deal with him. Yeah, you can't go to him. That's impossible. He must come to you. Well, send another man for him. Send three men. He's got to be brought here. So that's the sort of man your boss is. Not an unusual type. Everywhere we find these little semi-military upstarts robbing and fighting. That's what endless warfare has led to. Brigandage. What else could happen? But we, who are all the left of the old engineers and mechanics, have pledged ourselves to salvage the world. We have the airways, all that's left of them. We have the seas. And we have ideas in common. The brotherhood of efficiency. The Freemasonry of science. We're the last trustees of civilization when everything else has failed. 
I've been waiting for this. I'm yours to command. Not mine. Not mine. No more bosses. Civilization's to command. Tell him he'll have to come. He won't come on foot. Well, we'll have to carry him. I don't know what'll happen to me, sir, if you don't come. Me about. Who are you? Do you know this country's at war? At war? Still at it, eh? We must clean that up. What do you mean we must clean that up? All war? Who are you, I say? The law. Law and sanity. I am the law here. I said law and sanity. Where do you come from? Who are you? Wings over the world. Well, you know you can't come into a country like this in this fashion. I'm here. Do you mind if I sit down? And now, for the fourth time, who are you? I tell you, wings over the world. That's nothing. What government do you under? Common sense. I belong to world communications. We just run ourselves. Yeah. You run into trouble if you try and land here in wartime. What's the game? Order and trade. Trade, eh? Can you do anything in munitions? Not our line of business. Fuel, spare parts. We've got planes, we've got planes. I've got boys that have trained a bit on the ground. We've no fuel. It hampers us. We might do a deal. We might. I know where I can get some fuel. I've got my plans later, but if you can manage a temporary accommodation, we'd do business. World communications helps no one to make war. End war, end war. I want to make victorious peace. I seem to have heard that phrase before, when I was a young man. But it made no end of war. Now, look here, Mr. Aviator. Let's see how we stand. Come down to actuality. The way you swagger, you don't seem to realize you're under arrest. You and your machine. You'll find other planes looking for me if I happen to be delayed. We'll deal with them later. I even start a trading agency here, if you like. I have no objection. The first thing we shall want is to get our planes in the air again. Quite. A laudable ambition. But our new order has an objection to private airplanes. The impudence. I'm not talking about private aeroplanes. Our aeroplanes are public aeroplanes. This is an independent, sovereign state at war. I know nothing about any old order. I'm the chief here, and I'm not taking any orders, old or new, from you. Suppose I walked into trouble. Yeah, you can take that as right. Where have you come from? I flew from my headquarters at Bazaar this morning. We have some hundreds of new type planes and we're building more, fast. The factories are working again. We're gradually restoring order and trade in the whole Mediterranean area. We're scouting this region now to see how things are. You found out. This is an independent, sovereign state. Yes, we must talk about that. We don't discuss it. We don't approve of independent, sovereign states. You don't approve? We mean to stop them. That's war. If you will. All right, I think we know how we stand. Burton, take this man. If he gives you any trouble, club him. You hear that, Mr. Wings, over your wits? My friends know my whereabouts. If I don't come back, they'll send a force to find me. Perhaps they won't find you. They'll find you. They'll find me ready. Take him to the detention room downstairs. Now, was that wise? Wise? Yes, wise, to quarrel with him at once. Quarrel with him? Confound him if he began to quarrel with me. <laughs> you must clean that up. Clean that up? My wall. But there's things behind him. Things behind him? Some sort of aerial bus driver standing up to me. Like an equal. So you lost your temper and you bullied him. I don't bully, I just handle the man. He's the first real aviator that has come this way for years. Think of what that means, my dear. You want aeroplanes, don't you? You want your aeroplanes put in order? A really clever man could have had some of those machines up long ago. I'm sure of it. Along comes this stranger who's going to clean me up. You expect me to hand my planes over to him, lock, stock, and barrel? Why talk nonsense? You could have persuaded him under supervision. Supervision? The sort of oafs I've got here to supervise him. 
A bit too much for them. Oh, well, of course, if it's going to be too much for you, why don't you hang him and hide his machine before the others are after you? I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you. Now, this stranger hadn't taken me by surprise. I knew he was coming. Yes, I knew he was coming. I felt this conspiracy of their bus drivers brewing somewhere in the world. I felt they were getting ahead with their aeroplanes down there somewhere very well. Now's our chance. We've got this fella bottled up. They won't even begin to miss him for days. I've got everything fixed from now for an attack straight away on the Floss Valley to the old coal and shale pits where there's oil too. Then, up we buzz. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. And we're still watching Things to Come with Mr. John Provost. You know, in the movie, we're in 1966. I was around, except it didn't look like this. No, and there was no Beatles. And it was in color, and this is, I don't get it. I know. You think that They should have done the whole Wizard of Oz thing where they transitioned to color for go. the future parts. That and then right. 3D for the super futuristic parts. I don't know. You know, I should not produce things. I should not reproduce well. things either, but I should not <laughs> produce things for sure. All right. Anyways, John, a uh, famous actor, Timmy on Timmy and Lassie, and he's done a number of other things. But we were talking during the break that you knew a lot of famous people like David Cassidy. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, we were all in that same era working and we may not have... Um, seen each other all the time, but when we would, it would be like being in a, a fraternity. Right. You know, you hadn't seen somebody for a long time, and, and we'd all had the same experiences. But you know, when I was going to high school, I went to high school with um, 
uh, Dino Jr. from Dino Desi and Billy right. and, and David Cassidy and a lot of the kids. But um, And the chap from the Monkees. Oh, yeah, yeah, Davy Jones. Davy Jones. We didn't go to school together. Davy was a little... A little bit older than I was, was but brick. we kind of hung out. He had a motorcycle. I had a motorcycle. He what liked was he to like? Was he like? Davey was, was the, the nicest guy. I mean, really, really nice. Right. And, and I liked him, too, because he was my size. Oh. That's always a plus. He was, he was yeah. not as well. Well, you, know, as... you know, he's from your part of the world. Right, right. And, and he was a, a jockey. He wanted, to, An he, wanted, horse. he wanted to be a jockey. He loved horses. Um, yeah, and he ended up being a monkey instead. That's he was that's a, what you do. He was a horse monkey. There you go. So what was David Cassidy like? We recently lost him, so. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, David was a great guy. Right. Um, you know, and all those guys, they were all, you know, we were all just, we were friends. It didn't matter what they did or what I did. You know, when we were together, we were just like, you know, regular guys hanging out. Right. Well, you know, as a musician, I watched some of these musical-related shows like Partridge Family. Mm -hmm. And I always wonder, you know, are they actually performing? Well, or? some, well, okay, you know, like in Dino, Desi, and Billy, the real musician was Billy Hinchy. Um, and, you know, like with the Monkees, it was a, what you'd call a studio band, I guess. They right. put these people together and, right. um, you know, you had to have a little talent, of but course. then you learn it right. when you're doing it. So now, me, no way. I tried to be in a band when I was, you know, 16, 17. And it's like, oh boy, you couldn't get out of that room fast or out of the garage what did you fast play? enough. Um, bass, electric bass. bass, boom, boom, you know. But well, it's a fairly uncomplicated instrument. Thanks. I told you I was, that wasn't my. Did you my, play with a pick or it with wasn't your fingers? My fort. No, you know, with, with my pick? fingers, with my fingers. You play with your fingers. Yeah. That's the way you're like supposed that. to play. All right, well, what do you say we get back to this film? Sounds good to me. All right, off we go. Two things to come, and it's coming up right about now. Invaders in the face. With what airplanes, large a force I venture to say, as any in the world, this new oil can be adapted to our needs. That's quite a simple business. Nothing remains but the conclusive bombing of the hills. Then, for a time, we can hope for a rich, rewarding peace. A peace of the strong man armed who keepeth his house. And now, at this supreme crisis, you thought. Our master mechanic, refuse your help. Where are my planes? The job's more difficult than you think. Half your machines are hopelessly old. You'll have them 20s down once. To be exact, 19. You'll never get the others off the ground. The thing can't be done as you imagine it. I want assistance. What assistance? Your prisoner. But you want that chap in black that wings over the world? You want him released? He knows his business. I don't, enough. Make him my technical advisor. I don't trust you technical chaps. Then you won't get an aeroplane up. I want those planes. Well, if you get it. Then I want Dr. Harding out too. Where are those associates? I can't help that. If anybody in every town can adapt to that crude oil for our aeroplanes, it's Harding. If not, it can't be done. Oh, well, we've had a bit of an argument with Harding. He's the only man who can do this work for you.
Undo his hands. Well? Well what? The salute. Damn the salute. Oh, yeah. well, never mind the salute now. We'll talk about that later. Now, look here. Let's see how we stand. You, Gordon, are to undertake the reconstruction of our air force. The prisoner, Cabal, is to be placed at your disposal. Everywhere he goes, he's to be under guard and observation. No relaxing in there. Neither you nor he are to go within a hundred yards of his airplane. Mind that. Now, you, Harding, are to assist Gordon with this cure problem and place your knowledge of poison gas at our disposal. I have nothing to do with poison gas. You've got the knowledge of our to wring it out of you. The state, your mother, your father, the totality of your interests. No discipline can be too severe for the man that denies that by word or deed. Nonsense. We have a duty to civilization. You and your thought are driving us straight back to eternal barbarism. But this is pure treason. I protest against being dragged away from my work. Confound your silly war and your war material and all the rest of it. All my life has been interrupted and wasted and spoiled by war. I'll not stand it any longer. But this is treason, treason, Governor, stop that. We've need of your service. Well, what do you want? You're conscripted. You're under my orders now, and under no other orders in the world. I'm master here. I'm the state. I need fuel and gas. Neither fuel nor gas. You refuse? Absolutely. I don't want to be forced to extremities. May I have a word? I understand you want all of those out-of-date crocs of yours, which you call your Air Force, to fly again and fly well. They shall! With the help of that man, Cabell, you have in the cells, and Dr. Harding here, and we even have a dozen of your planes in the air again. You! You're a traitor to civilization. I won't touch it! If you'll give me Cabell, and if you leave me free to talk with Harding, I promise you you'll see your Air Force, a third of it at any rate, in the sky again. You talk as if you're driving a bargain with me. I'm sorry, Chief. It's not I who makes these conditions. It is the nature of things. You're going to have technical services. You're going to have scientific help without treating the men who give it to you properly. That's what I said all along. You're bullying too hard, my dear. There's a limit to bullying. Why? You can't make a dog hunt by beating it? I want those planes! I wanted to look at you. I am at your service, madam. You're the most interesting thing that has happened in every town for years. You honor me. You come from outside. I've begun to forget there was anything outside. I want to hear about it. May I offer you my only chair? You know, I'm not a stupid woman. I'm sure. This life here is limited. War, always going on and never ending. Flags, marching. Oh, I adore the chief. I've always adored him since he took control in the pestilence days when everyone else lost heart. He rules. He's firm. Everyone, every woman finds him strong and attractive. I can't complain. I have everything that is to be had here. And yet, this is a small, limited world we live in. You bring in the breath of something greater. When I saw you swooping down out of the air, when I saw you marching into the town hall, I felt this man lives in a greater world. And you spoke of the Mediterranean and the East, of your camps and factories. I read about the Mediterranean and Egypt and Greece and India. Oh, I can read a lot of those old books. I'm not like most of the younger people here. I learned a lot before education stopped and schools closed down. I want to see that world. Skies, snowy mountains, blue seas, sunshine, If pines. I had my way, you could fly to all that in a couple of hours. If you were free, and if I was free. I don't suppose any man has ever understood any woman since the beginning of things. You don't understand our imagination, how wild our imaginations can be. I wish I were a man. Oh, if I were a man. What are your people trying to do to us? What are you going to do to this boss of mine? The immediate question seems, what does he mean to do to me? Something violent and foolish, unless I prevent it. That's how I see things. And if he kills you? We shall come here and clean things up. But if you're killed, how can you say we? We go on. That's how things are. We are taking hold of things. 
In science and government in the long run, no man is indispensable. The human things go on. We, forever. I see. And this warlike state of ours here. It has to vanish, like the Tyrannosaurus and the saber-toothed tiger. So here you are. I said I could talk to him, and I have. I told you to leave that fellow alone. Yes, and sat up there drinking and swaggering and looking as proud as you could, Rudolph the Victorious. And here am I trying to find out what this black invader means. You think I wanted to come and talk to him, this gray cold man? While you're swaggering here, there are more planes away there at Basra getting ready. Basra? His headquarters. Have you never heard of Basra? These are matters for us to talk about. This lady has been putting me through a severe cross-examination. But the gist of it is that away there in Basra, new airplanes are rising night and day, like hornets round a hornet's nest. What happens to me is a small affair. They'll finish you. The new world of United Airmen will finish you. Listen, you can almost hear them coming now. Not a bit of it. What he says is the truth. What he says is bluff. Make peace with the Ammon and let him go. That means surrender of our sovereign independence. But more machines will be coming and more and more. Yeah, and he's here, hostage for their good behavior. Come, madam, enough of this little diplomatic mission of yours. You've got the subtlety of a bullfrog. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what she's been saying to you. I don't much care. There's no making peace between you and me. It's your world or mine, and it's going to be mine. For all your threats of swarms of hornets and so on, you're a hostage, remember that. Don't be too sure you win. So just sit here and think that over, Mr. Wings over the world. Well, my name is Julia Jimenez from Antioch, California. I just want to wish Tangela, Vincent, and Mr. Livingston a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I watch you every week. God bless you all. Thank you. Bye. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Gather your friends together around the campfire and listen to scary stories told by Spooky Boo. Horror stories, campfire stories, and scary stories at scarystorytime.com. Some moms travel miles for a present, but Cash's mom traveled the country for her child's life. To St. Jude. Yep. Cash was diagnosed in California with a rare cancer. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital tailored a special treatment just for him. Our research helps save kids everywhere. Want to do lunch? Well, someone is feeling a lot better. Go to stjude.org or shop wherever you see the St. Jude logo. Hey, we're Quiet Riot here at the House of Rock in Santa Rosa, and you're watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. Guests of the show stay at the Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa in Santa Rosa. Welcome back to the show. We are still watching Things to Come with Mr. John Provost. And, you know, yeah. John, it's always fun to have you here. You know why? Because you treat me better than most guests. Really? Yeah. Well, why wouldn't they treat you nicely? Um, they do treat me nice, but you treat me even nicer. 
Well, you're an okay guy. All right, that works. Okay. So, um, John and I are watching things to come, and hopefully you are as well. And we've got this whole wings over the world thing going on. Well, they're going to save. It's technology. They're going to save us. The perfect society. You know, they would not let myself into that society. You know, I'm, I'm a bit technically clueless. Okay. You know, I just got my first smartphone, and it's smarter than I am. True I, the same thing happened to me. Yeah, see, birds yeah. of a feather flock together. All right, well, speaking of technology, you did a film with Mr. Kurt Russell yes. called The Computer Wall Tennis Shoes. Yes. And you are wearing tennis shoes, but I know for a fact you are not a computer. No, but... Uh, the film was fun. No, it was a lot of fun. It was the first movie I did with... Um, for Disney, and right. I, I'd met Kurt before, so great guy, right. had a lot of fun, except I really made a mistake. How? Oh. I turned 18, I had my 18th birthday when we filmed this, the movie, and I set, stood back and I said, you know, I've been working for 15 years, I think I'll take a break. So I kind of, you know, said, okay, I'm done with acting now, and I was gonna go to college, I didn't know that they were going to have two more computer war tennis oh. shoes, and Bradley, me, I could have been in those two, oh my two more movies. You could have been an ongoing Disney I know, star. and then, but you know, I made see, see, but Young but no, but I, I went and I got an education. Here. There's a lesson here: so. do not quit a Disney film <laughs> to go to college. You're better off sticking with Disney, right? Well, you know, we all make a mistake once in a while. Well, you know, we've got enough lawyers and doctors. We need more actors, right? So go pursue your dreams in Hollywood. Forget this whole college. Oh, you know, somebody told me the other day they charge up to $500 for a textbook. Wow. Well, I mean, a book. Well, you know, but you, can't you buy them used? Well, I suppose so. But, you know, I mean, what's it, what are you going to get at half price? Yeah, and then they're all, book? you know, they're, they've scribbled in them and stuff. So My first but automobile no, cost less than that. It's true You're story. that old? No, it was just a very poorly built. Oh, oh I, was, I'm sorry. A, I didn't mean anything by that. It was a yellow sorry. Yugo. I, they practically well, no gave wonder. it to me. All a right, Yugo. so Kurt Russell. So was he married to uh, Goldie Wait, Horn back then? No, 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 no. He no? was only 18. Or he was he's a little bit, yeah, no. Well, no, he was no, legal no. age for well, marriage. Yes, but well, it seems she, like they've been married for like a thousand years now, right? You know, I don't think they're married. No. I think they just have lived together for a long, long time. Well, there's like laws. They're married. There's laws, right? Yeah, but they live like in Utah or someplace. Don't oh, or well, someplace. I don't know. That could but no, great. Confusion. I love Kurt. He's Santa this year. I know. I or saw he this. Was. I, I've not watched it, but I've heard it's a I very know. nice yeah. film. Yeah. All right. Well, we're not watching <laughs> Santa right now. We're watching things to come, and we've got to get back to that film. But when we come back, John is going to tell us all kinds of wonderful things he's got coming up. So you guys stay with us. Now get round to the other side and look at these engine bear bracings quickly. If I could get to my plane, there's a wireless there. Let's hope that they won't even trust me. We shall have to make a job of this. If I can manage to get your reserve petrol, let me have that for this plane. Good. It won't be easy to make a getaway. These oil pump connections aren't very good, but we'll have to risk it. I think we'll manage it all right now that Harding knows his part of the job. Good. Cabal is a prisoner. They've got him, sir, and he's in danger. I had great difficulty in getting here. You say Cabal is in danger? In very great danger. The bus there is a violent top. Mm. Job for our new squadron. Well, now we've got a chance to try the new gas of peace on somebody. There's no time to lose, sir. May I report to headquarters? Yes. 
Take him to the council. At last, we have definite news. What is it? Gordon didn't fall into the sea. He got away. A fishing boat saw him making for the French coast. Perhaps he reached his pals. Well... Well, he'll be coming back. He'll be bringing the others with him. Curse these world communications. Curse all airmen and gasmen and machine men. Why didn't we leave their machines and their sciences alone? I might have known. Why did I tamper with flying? Well, we needed airplanes against the hill state. Somebody else would have started in again with airplanes and gas and bombs if we hadn't. These people would have come interfering anyhow. Why was all this science ever allowed? Why was it ever let begin? Science is an enemy of everything that's natural in life. I dreamt of those fellows last night, great, ugly, black, inhuman chaps. Oh, like machines, bombing and bombing. Yes, I guess they'll come bombing, all right. Then we'll fight them. Since Gordon got away, I've had those air boys up to see me. They've got guts. They'll do something still. We'll fight them. We'll fight them. Ha! They've got hostages. And better didn't shoot them anyway. There's that chap Harding. Of course. He can tell us what to do against this gas. If I had to pull his arm off and knock his teeth down his throat. Get him, get him. Get him, Harding. I have to come to Earth sometime. What is this world communications? A handful of men like ourselves. They're not magic. Well, communication people, they got gas? What sort of gas? I know nothing about gas. Tell us about these masks, anyway. Well, they're rotten. They're no good at all. What sort of gas have they got? I tell you, gas isn't my business. Well, they can't gas us when you're here, anyway. Here they are. Listen, they're coming already. Yeah, go on, 
Here's the other fellow. He's the prize hostage. He's the best of the lot. They'll know him. Fetch him. Fetch him. Look. Is that gas? I saved your father and I saved you. Couldn't you call up your man there to stop this? I won't have it like this. What's happening? Everything's swimming. Welcome to the Flamingo Hotel in Northern California's beautiful Sonoma County wine country. The hotel was built in 1957 to mirror the image of the original Vegas Flamingo design. It's always been the area's favorite resort because of its amenities and its strong connection to the glamour of Hollywood and Las Vegas. The Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa offers 170 guest rooms. It includes 14 suites and Executive King Accommodations. From all of us at the Flamingo Hotel, we thank you and look forward to seeing you soon. You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. Listen, you are extremely terrifying. Just the scariest undead subhuman thing on TV, and I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they see you, so I'm going to have to block you. <sighs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're, they're blocked, too. It's popping time! Sutherland from Power Rangers, and you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. Go, go, Power Rangers! Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Well done, Gordon! 
Well, they laughed at me for sticking to my gas mask. But thanks to that, I'm here and everyone else is sleeping. I wonder if they'll ever use gas masks again. Huh. What is it? This man's not sleeping. He's dead. Dead in his world, dead with him. And a new world beginning. Poor old Fox, he and his flags and his folly. And now for the rule of the airmen and a new life for mankind. Our job is only beginning. For now, we have to put the world in order. It will be a long and complicated struggle. But we have the unity of a common order and a common knowledge. This is how I conceive our plan of operations. First, the roundup of brigands. That last dismal vestige of ancient predatory soldiery. The last would-be conqueror. Then settle, organize, advance. This zone, then that. And at last, wings over the world. And the new world begins. Mm-hmm. What a funny place New York was. All sticking up and full of windows. Mm, they built houses like that in the old days. Why? Well, they'd no light inside their cities as we have, so they had to stick them up into the daylight. What there was of it. They'd no properly mixed and conditioned air. Everybody lived half out of doors. <coughs> they had windows of brittle glass. The age of windows lasted four centuries. They never seemed to realize that we could light the interiors of our houses with sunshine of our own, so there was no need to stick them up ever so high into the air. They keep on inventing new things now, don't they? And making life lovelier and lovelier. Lovelier, yes. And bolder. I suppose I'm an old man, my dear, but some of it seems like going too far. This space gun of theirs that they keep on shooting. What is this space gun, great-grandfather? Well, it's a gun that is charged by electricity. It's a lot of guns inside one another, and each one discharges the gun next inside. I don't properly understand it, but the cylinder it shoots out last goes swish right away from the earth. I wish I could fly around the moon. <laughs> well, that in time. Won't you come back to your history pictures again? I'm glad I didn't live in the old world. I know that John Cabal and his airmen tidied it all up. Did you see John Cabal, Great Granddad? Well, you can see him in your pictures. But you saw him when he lived. You really saw him? Yes. I saw the great John Cabal with my own eyes when I was a little boy. He was a lean, brown old man with hair as white as mine. He was the great-grandfather of our Oswald Cabal, the president of our council. I take it the space guns passed all its preliminary trials, and there's nothing left now but to choose the two who are to go. That's going to be the trouble. Thousands of young people have been applying, young men and young women. I never dreamt the moon was so attractive. Practically, the gun's perfect now. There are risks, but reasonable risks. And the position of the moon in the next three or four months gives us the best conditions for getting there. It's only the, the choice of the two now that matters. Well? There are going to be difficulties. That man, Theotokopoulos, is talking on the radio about it. He's a fantastic fellow. Yes, but he's making trouble. It's not going to be easy to choose these young people. With all these thousands offering themselves, we've looked into thousands of cases. We've rejected everyone who's in perfect health, or anyone who had friends who objected. And the fact is, we want you to talk to two people. There's Raymond Parsworthy of General Frederick. You know him? Yes, I know him. And his son. We want you to see the son, Morris Parsworthy. Why? He asks to go. We think you ought to see him. He's waiting here. Is Morris Parsworthy there? He's on his way. Good. You want to talk to me? Forgive me, sir. I came straight to you. You're asking a favor. A very big favor. 
I want to be one of the first two human beings to go around the moon. It means danger. Great hardship, anyhow. You realize there's an even chance of never coming back alive. Still greater chance of coming back a cripple. Give me credit for not minding that, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, a lot of you young people don't mind that. So why should I give you a favor? Well, I'm, I'm the son of a friend of yours. And the people seem to feel you wouldn't to send someone you don't know, sir. Go on. We've talked about this over and over again. We? Yes, both of us. It's her idea even more than it's mine. Her idea? Who is she? Someone much closer to you than I am, sir. Go on. It's Catherine, your daughter. She says you can't possibly send anybody's child but your own. I might have known. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. I'm Crazy Boots Martin. And James the Red. At the NorCal Pirates Festival. And you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. <laughs> This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to the Creature Feature Show. We are still with John Provost and watching things to come. So, John, conventions. Oh, You've yes. Done, you're at like every convention that I ever do or go to. Well, I was uh, one in Germany a while back. You? I've never done Germany. Yeah, it was great. Oh, my God. You know, yeah. if they invite us. Livingston speaks perfect German. I he's, know. He's I wish he had German. been with us because, you know, I don't speak German. I know. But They've no. got those long words. And it sounds pretty harsh a lot of times. I, but I the people so. were great. Oh, I, and they I loved nice. Lassie nice and dogs people. over oh, there. Cool. So it was great. So they flew you out there and said, we want Timmy from yeah. Lassie. Yeah, it was in, in Stuttgart, Germany. Stuttgart. And it was great. You know, there's a font called Stuttgart. I'm learning computers and fonts are my favorite thing because uh -huh. you can write differently with different There's fonts. too many. Yeah. Well, I don't know. So you had fun doing that. You do yeah. them around here. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's at more conventions than we ever do. Well, I see you around. And I know. I think we're going to be together. That's right. We are going to be at the East Bay Comic Con yeah. on yeah. February 10th, right? February 10th in Concord, And I, I hope California. you're bringing... Livingston and Tangella. Oh, you know, they would not allow me to go without them. So the, the only thing that occasionally happens is Tangella has to stay because she has like 
a sick goat or something oh, like well. that. But you know, but that's it, understandable. It is. It is. Okay. She has to like. She has to be like. Uh, what do they call that when people take care of animals? A vet. No. A veterinarian. Oh, I can't remember the word now. It's it's a Animal it's. Husband. Husbandry. Oh, okay. He's right. No, but so she does husbandry, and she should be doing like wifery, right? Yeah. I, I know that didn't. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's a real thing, though. All right, and uh, we're gonna be at that <laughs> and uh, East Bay Comic Con, and the website yeah. is East Bay Comic Con Comic dot com. Dot com. Yeah. So go there for details, but uh, it's going to be our first convention of 2019. It'll be fun. Everybody should come out. First for you. Meet you in As, person. It's a lovely venue too. Yes. All right. Well, we say we finish this film. It's about time. Let's do it. Off okay. we go to things to come. You guys stay with us. Today I'm going to put it to the world plainly. Is this thing to go on? Or are we sane and normal human beings to put an end to it? And an end to all such follies forever. progress. What is the good of all this progress onward and onward? We demand a halt. We demand a rest. The object of life is happy living. We will not have human life sacrificed to experiment. Progress is not living. It should only be the preparation for living. They stage the old Greek tragedy again. And the father offers up his daughter to his evil god. And that they voice is sounding to the whole world. No. The old slaveries have taken new yeah. names. And They'll have to hear him and make what they can of him. What does this mean? Make no mistake about it. The slaveries they put upon themselves today, they will impose tomorrow upon the whole world. Is man never to rest, never to be free? A time will come when you in your turn will be forced away to take your chance upon strange planets and in dreary abominable places beyond the stars. An end to progress. Make an end to this progress now. Let this be the last day of the scientific age. Make the space gun the symbol of all that drives us and destroy it now. I wonder what they will make. great-grandson of John Gabal, the air dictator, the man who changed the whole course of the world. You, you've got experiment in your blood, you and your daughter, but I'm, I'm more normal. I don't believe my boy would have thought of it. The two of them must have got together. They'll come back together. This time, there's no attempt to land on the moon. Hmm. When is this great experiment to be made? How much longer have we got before they go? When the space gun is ready. Sometime this year, do you mean? Soon. Then, is there no way of saving our children from this madness? But would it be saving our children? Well, here they are. Father, where to go? Yes, you're to go. No. Two hours ago. Your speech has struck fire. All the people are excited and angry. Some are already going out of the city towards the space gun. Nothing is wanted now but leading. We must go right on with this. To the space gun. And so we end an age. Young people, just beginning life. Do you want to go into that outer horror? Why don't you send somebody who's sick of life? They want fit young people, alert and quick. And we're fit young people. We can observe and come back and tell. Cabal, I just want to ask you one plain question. Why did you let your daughter dream of going on this mad moon journey? Because I love her. And I wanted to live to the best effect. Dragging out life to the last possible second is not living to the best effect. The nearer the bone, the sweeter the meat. The best of life, Password, it lies nearest to the edge of death. 
I'm a broken man. I don't know where honor lies. You haven't got things right, Passworthy. Our fathers and our fathers' fathers cleaned up the old order of things because it killed children. It killed those who were unprepared for death. Because it tormented people in vain. Because it outraged human pride and dignity. Because it was an ugly spectacle of waste. But that was only a beginning. There's nothing wrong in suffering if you suffer for a purpose. Our revolution didn't abolish danger or death. It simply made danger and death worthwhile. Cabal. Cabal, the gun's in urgent danger. It's a race against time now to save it. Theodore Copulus is up with a crowd of people already. He's going to the space gun now. They're going to break it up. They say it's the symbol of your tyranny. And their weapon? Bars of metal. They can smash delicate apparatus. They can do endless mischief. But you have a traffic control. Can't they produce the police? Very few. We've nothing but the gas of peace, and it isn't ready. It'll take hours yet. We must hold this crowd back at any cost for a time until the gas of peace is ready. Is it? Well, we've stopped the airways. They'll have to go afoot. And they'll take an hour or more to get there, even those who've already started. This gun mustn't be broken up. After all the final experiments have been made, when everything was ready... When everything was ready? If they smash up that infernal gun, then honor is satisfied and you needn't go. They won't smash the gun. Suppose the gun was fired now. Would the cylinder reach the moon? It would miss and fly into outer space. It's five now. If the gun were fired before seven... Then it could be. Yes. Then... We go now. No, no, no. Oh, I don't know what to say, but don't go, don't go. Oh, but, Father, we must go now, or we may never go. And then for the rest of our lives, we'll feel we've shirked and lived in vain. <laughs> This way. As men tied to the earth, we dream of visiting the stars. stars, we will dream. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever.
Gather your friends together around the campfire and listen to scary stories told by Spooky Boo. Horror stories, campfire stories, and scary stories at scarystorytime.com. to the platform, we'll guard this below. Right. Contract all your muscles when the concussion comes. In five minutes, you'll be able to get loose and move about. We want to put an end to this inhuman foolery. We mean to destroy that gun. We have a right to do what we like with our lives, with our sort of lives. We don't grudge you your artistic life. You have safety, plenty, all you want. We want to make the world safe for men. No one prevents you. How can we do that on your sound inventions of perpetually changing life for us? When you're everlastingly contriving strange things. When you make what we think great seem small, when you make what we think strong seem feeble, we don't want you in the same world with us. We don't want this expedition. We don't want mankind to go out to the moon and to the planets. We shall hate you more if you succeed than if you fail. This is all the gun! Before you can even reach the base of the gun, it will be fired. Beware of the concussion! Beware of the concussion! Stand by, control. 
control room. What we've done is monstrous. What they've done is magnificent. Will they come back? Yes. And go again and again. Till the landing is made and the moon is conquered. This is only a beginning. If they don't come back, my son and your daughter, what of that, Cabal? Then, presently, others will go. Oh, God, is there never to be any age of happiness? Is there never to be any rest? Rest enough for the individual man. Too much and too soon, and we call it death. But for man, no rest and no ending. He must go on, conquest beyond conquest. First this little planet and its winds and waves, and then all the laws of mind and matter that restrain him. Then the planets about him, and at last, out across immensity to the stars. And when he has conquered all the deeps of space and all the mysteries of time, still he will be beginning. We're such little creatures. Poor humanity is so fragile, so weak. Little, little animals. Little animals. And if we're no more than animals, we must snatch each little scrap of happiness and live and suffer and pass, mattering no more than all the other animals do or have done. It is this or that. All the universe for nothing. Which shall it be? Which shall it be? And that ends things to come. So I suppose things to come are not going to be so bad, are they? Well, According we can hope. This film. Well, you know, they're not very accurate. I mean, that whole thing in the 60s and, you know, well, who knows. It was written a long time ago. She's still in the festive mood, you know. We're celebrating New Year's here on Creature Features tonight with John <laughs> Provost. And a little Tangella has become our master of ceremonies for decorations, I think. So uh, you'll have to accept my apologies for her insistence on this. But it's uh, okay. So, so what do you got next? What do you got going on next? Um, well, we're going on a cruise. I love later cruises this year. Yes, with um, the Beave, Jerry Mathers, the Beaver. Oh, yes, I've and, heard about this. And Marianne and you Kathy know, from Gilligan's Island, and Kathy Garver. No, Don Wells is and, going. Yes. Oh, I'm yes. going now. Whoa. 
I love Angela. Oh, she's terrible. Whoa. Absolutely yeah. terrible. No, and, and so, and Don Barry Wells. Williams. What about Ginger? Is she going to be there? I don't think so. No. Well, no, no. we want Ginger. We want Marianne, right? Yes, yes. Marianne so is who that we want to see. Fun. All right. And that is going to be a fun thing, leaving Florida. Yes. And going, it's going to like the We're Cayman going down Islands. to Mexico and the Cayman Islands and all kinds of fun. And so oh, it's going to be great. And oh, yeah, yeah. You know, about a, a dozen celebrities from the era. Right. So it will be great. Oh, my goodness. I should yeah. go. So we could find out more about this if we go to your website, right? Yes. They can go to johnprovost.com. All right. So that's www.johnprovost.com. Dot com and they yes. can get all the information they need there, right? It's there, and it's um, an, another one, another website that we'll put down there too. Oh, good. All right. Yes. All right. Perfect. Well, you've been an absolutely wonderful guest, as you always are. Well, thank you for having me. And thank you for spending New Year's almost Eve with us. Yes. And I know Tangela was quite pleased that you were coming, although she was thank a bit you. sad you didn't bring the dog. Well, next time. Next time. Yeah. Last time he had a collie with him. It looked just like Lassie, but it wasn't really Lassie, right? One, one of Lassie's relatives. It was a boy. And Lassie's it's, a girl, right? No, all the Lassies were boys. All the Lassies were yes. boys. See, you learn something. Lassie's the oldest cross dresser in Hollywood. We need to start a new thing called You Learn Something on Creature Features Every Day. Well, there every you go. week, right? Right. All right. Thank you, John. We will Thank see you. you at East Bay Comic Con. But yes. Until then, you have a wonderful new year. And as far you. as you lovely people out in our audience, we hope you have a lovely New Year's Eve and a lovely New Year's. Be safe so you can be back next week because we're going to have somebody else who knows who. You'll see. Have a nice night. So, John, yes. Stuttgart, Germany. Yo, it was you great. mentioned they invited you to Stuttgart, Germany. Yeah. And I, I've never been to Stuttgart, and I'm thinking... Oh, you should go. I know I should go, but maybe I should go with you next time you go. 